How was your day? How was your day? God is good? And all the time? <laughs> Let me talk to the men. Men, God is good? Oh, my. And all the time? We have some saved men on this side. It's uh, nice to hear you. Ladies, let me hear you. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Good. I saw some men speaking with the ladies. Well, <laughs> I'll have to pray. Oh, by the way, having said I saw men speaking with the ladies, let me throw something in. Listen carefully. When God made Adam and Eve, because we live in a very terrible world. If the Bible says white, the world says black. And the church tends to say black. The only physical characteristic that the Bible gives about Adam and Eve is what? The only physical, not social, physical, good thinking anyway, physical characteristic about Adam and Eve was what or is what? One is male, one is female. We know nothing else. Now, if that's the case, does not gender difference matter to God? Yes. We live in a world, you look at two people, you're not sure who's the woman, who's the man. No, I'm quite serious. I was in Chicago, and I can call Chicago, that's where I'm from, I mean, U.S. And there were two people walking down the corridor. I was in the, 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 uh, the uh, where do you go to catch planes? The uh, uh, airport. And uh, I'm trying to, because they're holding each other and rubbing each other, and I, what's this, a, a movable massage? What's this? So I uh, am trying to figure out which one is the man and which is the woman. So I accelerated my pace. <laughs> and as I moved around them, I furtively glanced to the left. And then I identified who the man was and who the woman was. No, I shouldn't have said that. Then I realized they were both men. But one looked like a woman, slightly, and the other looked, well, let me uh, leave it at that. Listen to me carefully. If you are a man, you look like a man. When you stand next to a woman, people shouldn't be. <laughs> and if you're a woman, finish it for me. Look like a woman. Which all of you do. I just wanted to throw that in. Because the church gets swept away by what is popular in society. Now state after state in the United States, they're passing laws legalizing same-sex marriage. Now, I don't know what your laws are in England, so I don't want to be thrown in prison. But, what's that? Oh, it's happening here. Well, wherever we are, we need to pray. What's that? It's already passed. In merry old England. Okay. My brothers and sisters, we have to stand up for what this says. Regardless of how much of the world says something else. And so, I thank God that he made men and he made women or man and woman distinct, separate, two different genders. That's the way we must think. All right, let me uh, make an observation. I, I notice that when the, the team is singing, you're not singing. Now, are they putting on a performance or are you supposed to be singing? You don't sing. What's that? Oh, it's not familiar. Then a change has to be made somewhere for next year's camp meeting, not this one. You ought to sing with them. That's why they're leading you. And so in order to rectify that uh, shortcoming, I thought I would lead you in a song. No charge. I'll just lead you. Now, there are three little choruses. Here's how they go. 
I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. Sing it with me. I'm gonna shout, shout, shout. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. Praise the Lord. When the gates are open wide, I'm gonna sit at Jesus' side. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. Praise the Lord. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, Coming for to carry me home. Now here's how we'll sing it. You will sing. I'm going to sing, sing, sing. That is, uh, Mr. Cameraman, I'm moving. Please keep me centered in the shot. Now, <laughs> is that what this is? You know, I all, let me throw in another story. I all, <laughs> well, you ran over my time. I'm running over yours. Do you have another barbecue? Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> how was the barbecue last night? Huh? You don't know. You didn't go. Who went? How was it? I was in my room saying, I wish the whale that swallowed Jonah would, <laughs> would come out of the sea and swallow that barbecue. Anyway, now you, Mr. Cameraman, I'm moving. You and that distinguished group elevated, you'll be, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. You and you. Oh, when the saints and over there. Swing low. <clears throat> Do you have that? What time is it? You set me a plate, I'll let you go late. Now let's have a trial run. All right. I'm going to sing, sing. I say trial run. I'm going to sing, sing, sing. Stop. Oh, when the saints swing low. Are we ready? I'm going to sing. Oh, when the saints swing low. Are we ready? What did you have for breakfast? Rain, water, and sand? I didn't hear you at all. But I accept by faith you were singing. I guess these two sections drowned you out. God bless you. Amen. You look very good in heaven. <laughs> to see you walk in the streets of heaven. Let nothing keep you from heaven. Amen. I mean nothing and no one. Not husband, wife, boyfriend, whether yours or somebody else's. That's the world in which we live. <laughs> Let nothing, not your career, your education, so-called, keep you from heaven. Because hell is no place to be. Ellen White says we have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Our subject for this evening, one with him. What did I say? Before I begin, I want two young people to come and pray for me. Here are the qualifications. What are you laughing at? <laughs> you must believe that this is God's remnant church. To whom has been given a message no other church can preach. If you believe that, two of you, come. Ah, my good brother, you move with athletic ease, come. Oh, come, 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 my handsome brother. Come, come. No, oh, come. More prayer, more power. May I have a microphone that works? Where is it? Ah, my good brother. Blessings upon you. Oh, sister, you're joining us? All right. Uh, the prayers have to be short. Let me get your name. Chawatu. Who? Chawatu. Spell it. C-H-I-A-W-O-T-U. Chawatu. Where is that from? Nigeria. Nigeria. Amen for Nigeria. Amen. I was there five years ago. Uh, Umudike? Umahia State. Yes. There's Umahia State. All right. Michael Okpara Agricultural University. Fantastic. Oh, God bless you. All right. Uh, what's your name again? Chawotu. Chawotu. Don't you have an easier name like Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Amen. Bent. 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 Spell it. B E N G T. Oh, Bengt. Yes. Where's that from? It's a German name. 
You're from Germany? I'm not from Germany. I knew you wouldn't. <laughs> okay, all right. What's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas. Okay, well, Nicholas, where are you from? Birmingham. Birmingham, all right. Where are you from? What's your name, sister? Tishana. Tishana. Yeah. Where's that from? I don't know. Okay, that's all right. That's okay. I knew you didn't. Okay, all right. <laughs> now, you believe this is God's remnant church? Yes, I do. You believe we have a message? No one else can preach. Not that it's not in the Bible. They can read it. Listen to me carefully. No one else can preach it. No one else. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Have you ever heard any other television preacher other than Adventist preach the three angels message? They can't do it. Even though they can read it. You know why? They weren't called to preach it. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. We begin with my brother to the right. Oh, use this one. That one is not quite good. After you, then my brother, my brother, my sister. Oh, hold on. If you're wearing a hat, men, please take them off. Men don't wear hats in church. I love you, but hats off. Oh, okay. Heads bowed, eyes closed in the presence of a holy God. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that in this room are the patience of the saints, mm -hmm. those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Yes. Help us to fulfill this verse in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment, which did begin in 1844, mm -hmm. Lord, is almost soon to close. Mm -hmm. Help us to be ready in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The creator of all nations, we ask you, Father, to send you double portion of angels in this room at this time. Mm -hmm. And above all, Father, please guide the pastor who is going to preach to us today. Be in his mind, Father. Mm -hmm. Direct him, Father. Let things, everything that he will say, not come from him, but you. Yes. And Father, open our minds mm -hmm. so that we can receive everything that we'll receive today and put it in our daily lives and be part of our daily lives. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Eternal Father, as we are gathered here today, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will send your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and to our mind. May you be with the minister, speak through him, and speak to our hearts and our mind, and let us be receptive to your word and to act and to do according to your will. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Lord, you say that enter your gates with thanksgiving mm -hmm. and into your courts with praise. praise yes. Heavenly Father, I pray and ask that you cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Make us holy, Heavenly Father. Baptize us anew with power from on high. Feed us with your word. Shine the light of your presence into our lives. Lord, help us to minister to others through your word that will be spoken to us. And help us that we may dwell within your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. God bless you all. I mean that from my heart. I am grateful. God is good. And all the time... Our subject is what? Let's go to John 17. We shall read verse 11. Our subject, one with him. John 17, reading from verse 11. I forgot to ask for three favors. Favor number one, what's that? Perhaps you've already done it. Okay, that's, pray for me is favor two. What's favor one? Unless you need a phone for uh, the Bible, please, out of respect for God and some consideration for me, please, Turn them off. Please. I know it's an addiction. I know that. Um, but fight it in God's presence. Favor number two, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. And favor number three, think as you listen. Our subject, one with him, our initial text, John 17, reading verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, Keep through thine own them, those whom thou hast given me, finish the verse, that they may be one how, as we are. Is that verse from Revelation? So we can assume it is what? Literal. In the context of my presentations. That is a literal verse. Listen carefully. Jesus prayed to his father. Now, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is John 17. 
These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thyself that thy son, thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. This is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. In this prayer, he says in verse 11, that they, meaning the disciples for whom he was praying, he was about to leave them, that they may be one as we are. Verse 22 says, And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one. How? As we are one. If you study the book of John, you will very soon realize, notice, a remarkable reality, consistently a theme, what the experts call the motif. Over and over again you will read that we are to be to Jesus what Jesus is to the Father. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. As I am to the Father, you are to me. God has a plan for us. And that plan is to make us so close to him. The only thing we will not be is God. Because you can't make God. Listen to what Ellen White says about the creation of Lucifer. The faith I live by, page 66, paragraph 2. What book did I say? What chapter, what page, what paragraph? Speaking of Lucifer, she said, God made him good and beautiful. As near as possible, like himself. So here is God. Right next to God. As close as one coat of paint is to the other. Lucifer. And we will take his place. Somebody say amen. amen. Not the angels. We. Conflict and courage. Page 21, paragraph 5. God created man for his own glory. That after test and trial, the human family might become one with the heavenly family. In other words, when God made Adam, Adam was not yet one with God as fully as God desired. Adam had to be tested. After test and trial, the human family might become one with the heavenly family. It was God's purpose to repopulate heaven with the heavenly family if they would show themselves obedient to his every word. What was that reference? Conflict and courage, page 21, paragraph 5. What is this oneness God wants with us? So few of us want with him. Why would God desire such a union with sinners? Let's try to understand this union. Let's go to John 14. What's our subject? One with him and anyone who's one with jesus is one with the father john 14 let's read from verse 16. do we have that you have the king james version no i read other versions let me say that for those of you who think i'm as narrow-minded as the straits of gibraltar i, I read other versions but it's just my favorite that's all is that fine is that okay all right john 14 16 says what and i will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Keep reading. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, keep reading, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwelleth with you. That's present tense shall be in you. That's future tense. And that future tense will become present upon the departure of Christ. While Christ was with them, God was with them. Listen carefully to my words. Here is Peter. Now, let's choose John as I spoke to the teens. The closest disciple to Jesus was John. By whose choice? John's choice. God bless you. Let me say it again. The closest disciple to Jesus was John by John's choice. So at the Last Supper, 
Peter asked John to ask Jesus who would betray him. Why do you think Peter did that? Because John was seated where? Right next to Jesus. By whose choice? John's choice. There is no one who can keep you from being close to Christ. Now, while Christ was with the disciples, they had God with them. Now, here's John. Here's Christ. The Bible says John was leaning on Christ's breast. Nothing homosexual about that. Somebody say amen. amen. There's such a thing as two men loving each other. One of the things I love about Africa when I travel, particularly south and, southern and, and north, uh, eastern Africa, that's where I go all the time, it's not unusual to see men hold hands across the street because they're talking. So because they're talking, they want to preserve the connection, they hold hands across the street. Or for a few yards, walk down the street holding hands. Nothing unusual. Now, don't do that to me in the U.S. Are you with me? <laughs> Leave my hands alone. <laughs> Are you following me? Because people begin to squint and pray and wonder. So don't hold my hand if you're a man in the United States. In Kenya, okay. You know, Uganda, all right. But in the U.S., England, leave me alone. <laughs> and so John is leaning on the breast of Jesus, close. And Peter says, ask him who it was. Now, as close as John was to Jesus, follow me closely. Today, we can be closer to Christ than John was. Amen. Let me group all the disciples. We today are to be closer to Christ than the disciples were who walked with him, rode in the boats with him, had dinner with him, watched him perform his miracles, and were always within touching distance of him. How is it possible for me, 2,000 years hence, to be closer to Christ? Listen to John 14, 16, 17 again. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now notice the word another. If I just consumed a banana, and I said to you, bring me another fruit. If you brought me a plum, have you fulfilled my request? Come on, answer me. Yes. What did I ask for? Another fruit. So you can bring me a pineapple. But if I were to say, bring me another banana, and you brought me a mango, have you fulfilled my request? No. Now, there are two Greek words for other, another. One is alos. The other is heteros. Alos means of the same kind in just about every way. Heteros means of a different kind. And so a heterosexual is someone attracted to a person of the another sex. Yes. So heteros means of a different kind. Jesus says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you an alos comforter. One, come on, one just like him. To such an extent that when you have this comforter, you have Jesus. That's why Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, Christ can't be speaking from both sides of his mouth. Now, in John 16, 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So in 16, Jesus says, I have to go. And when I go, someone else comes. In John 14, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How does he come? In the person of the Spirit. Now, where does the Spirit dwell according to Jesus? For he dwelleth with you, come on, and shall be in you. Then Christ says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And Jesus cannot lie. My brothers and sisters, through the indwelling of the Spirit, we are closer to Christ than the disciples. We can be. Than the disciples were. I'll give you something else. Through the humanity of Christ, we can be closer to him than Adam was before Adam sinned. Quiz question number one. When God made Adam and Adam opened his eyes and began to breathe and he saw Christ, did he see Christ in human form, yes or no? No. When did Christ take human form with, along with the nature? When he came as a baby. Notice I said along with the nature. He took human form when he had dinner with Abraham, remember that? 
He had the form, not the nature. Are you listening? When he came as a baby, he came with the form and the nature. That is the incarnation. What he did with Abraham was not incarnation. We need nature and we need form. Now, when Adam opened his eyes and he looked into the eyes of Jesus, he saw God. He did not see human nature. So there was some difference between him and God. And wherever there's, wherever there's a difference, there's a gap. However small, it may be a, a synaptic gap. It's still a gap. When Christ took human form, hmm, he closed that gap. What's our subject? One with whom? Jesus Christ. And since Christ is one with the Father, when we are one with Christ, finish that equation. We are one with the Father. Now listen to the prayer. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those who thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. The standard of oneness between the believer and Christ is the oneness between Christ and the Father. In other words, the standards God has for human beings are divine. You said amen, you're very gracious, but you didn't get it. You would think God would set human standards for human beings. No. God views you too highly. God thinks too much of you. God realizes what is possible to you through Christ. God sets divine standards for human beings. So you are here as a human being, but I want you up here through Christ. And how does Christ come? Through the Spirit. So we've identified the Spirit and the humanity of Christ as the basis on which we have a oneness with God no other created being has. Amen. I said, no other created being. Amen. Hebrews 2.16, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, he took on him the seed of Abraham. The Bible says, listen, Christ came as a man, not as an angel. Yes, someone told me this morning, he's Michael the archangel. Christ can appear as anything, yes. But appearing as something and being something are two different things. The order Holy Ghost appeared as a dove. But a dove is not an intelligent being. Are you following me? He can appear as a dove, but the Holy Ghost is not a dove. He appeared as clung, uh, cloven tongues of fire. The Holy Ghost is not fire, but he has the power to appear in any form he wants. The Holy Ghost is an intelligent being. Christ has your flesh. Glorified, of course. He is man. He is God. In him, we are united to God, I say one more time, more closely than any other created being. Now, let's take a, a chemical, genetic view of the oneness that should exist between Christ and you. As we go through the Bible verses, ask God to open your eyes. Psalm 119, verse 18, David prayed, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. We'll read from verse 21. Genesis 2, verse 21, I have 20 minutes left. So says that clock. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading from what verse? 21. The Bible says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now what? Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Let's dwell on that genetically then let's make a spiritual application god took a rib from adam what was adam made from what was eve made from a rib but we know the rib was made from dust we know that but god took the rib when it had been moved up a little level higher than dust itself made eve adam says this is bone of my bone. I was watching a documentary many years ago about a place called Somaliland. Ever heard of it? It is, it is, not, it is not recognized by the United Nations, but it is a country. They have their own currency and everything. 
but conditions are primitive. And there was a doctor speaking on the documentary, and he performed the surgery. Someone had been injured severely. Part of the forehead had been blown off. He took part of the skull of a goat and connected it to the rest of the man's forehead, fixed it, and the man looked fine. Now, can that man say, that goat is born of my bone? No. Why? Two different bones. Are you with me? Now, they worked physically. And he looked okay. But the genetics of one bone is not the same as the genetics of the other bone. One is the bone of a goat. One is the bone of a man. Visually, they seem to work. But chemically, they're different. Adam said, this is bone, come on, bone of my bone. The man who had that operation could not say that. He has said, this is bone of that goat. <laughs> and the goat would say, this is bone of that man. Adam says, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. On this basis, she shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. In a certain sense, she and I are, which is what God said, verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and there shall be one flesh. That oneness goes beyond the physical up to the spiritual. Bone of my bone, keep this in mind, flesh of my flesh. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. One of my favorite books, Ephesians. Written by whom? Paul. Yes, Paul. Ephesians 5. We shall read from verse 25. Our subject is, One with Him. Do you have that? Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Spirit of Christ, he says, Husbands, love your wives. All husbands say amen. amen. All right, we have six husbands here. Husbands, love your wives. How? Even as Christ loved the church. Now, here is another example of a divine standard required of human beings. Listen again. Listen again. Don't talk. Don't text. God tells us, men, you must love your wife the way Christ loves the church. That is a divine standard required of human beings. If we loved our wives that way, there would be no such thing on the earth as spousal abuse. All wives say amen. amen. All potential wives say amen. Amen. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Read verse 28 with me now. So ought men to love their wives, how? As their own what? Yes. Because that's effectively what she is. He that loveth, Keep reading. His wife, go on, loveth himself. Because she is spiritually his body. Follow me closely. Verse 29. For no man ever yet what? Hid his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it. How? Even as the law of the church, the divine standard is brought back. Because men forget quickly. Uh, and women. Now read verse 30 with me. What does it say? For we are members of his, of his, and of his. Where did Paul get that from? Genesis 2.23. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Now, here is another woman. What's her name? The church. The church. And the Bible says this woman, like Eve, as Eve was born of Adam's bone and flesh of Adam's flesh, as our subject is one with him, the Bible says the church, the true church, the member genuinely surrendered to Christ is born of his bones, part of his body, part of his flesh. 
through the humanity of Christ. Now, you're watching me on the screen, and uh, you're saying, mm, God cannot be that good. No way. Let me put it more drastically. Who is the highest angel in heaven? Gabriel. When we get to heaven, we will have a closeness to God and occupy a position with God not even sinless angels will enjoy. Because of the humanity of Christ. Now it is urgent that you understand this because as an agent you are sent to foreign territory what's that foreign territory the world you are sent there to represent your kingdom the kingdom of God now if you and I are not careful that kingdom can transform us into its image so we have to understand who we are in Christ so that when we are in this foreign kingdom which we are the world we preserve our uniqueness as we remain constantly aware that Christ and we are one not the world and we Christ and we are one Christ prayed that they may be one as we are. Go to John 15. Let's look at this union again. John 15. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject is what? One with him. Our theme, transformed agents. You have John 15? I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. By the way, read that verse microscopically. Jesus says, I am what? not just the vine. If Christ says, I am the true vine, what may we assume? There's a false vine. And listen to me, there is. You've got to be sure what vine you're connected to. Um, being a member of the church does not mean you're connected to Christ. And I have to keep pounding on that. People misconstrue or misunderstand church membership as heaven membership. Now, the two should go together, but you can be a member of a church, not a member of heaven. I am the true vine, says Christ, and my father is the husband man. What's the function of the husband man? Let's keep reading. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Listen to me carefully. God the Father is cleansing the vine. You see someone leave the church. It wasn't Christ. The Father. By the way, no one can make you leave the church. Are you listening to me? Too many people say, ah, I left the church because... No, you left because you wanted to leave. Now, the behavior of others may have contributed a little momentum to your departure. But you left... Because you chose to leave. When someone talks badly about you on the job, do you leave? No, because that's rent. <laughs> but for you, church is nothing. But the job is rent, so you don't leave. The job is school fees. The job is address. The job is Louis Vuitton, handbag, or whatever. But the church is nothing to you. So you leave. We don't see the value of church membership. One is with Christ, so we leave very quickly. A little piece of something broke off. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth what? More fruit. You're going through trials, God is trying to produce more fruit in your life. Assuming you didn't bring it on yourself. Verse 3. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken. Let me digress again. You want your life cleaned up? The word is the detergent. Now you're clean through the word which I not David Cameron, God bless him. I, not Socrates. I, not Barack Obama. I, not Randy Skeet. So you must be careful to what you expose your mind. 
Because if the word of God cleanses you, something else may defile you. Now you cling to the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4. Abide in me. Go on. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Let's look at that. For those of you who are horticulturalists. Abide in the vine. The vine is Christ, the central trunk. We are the branches. What sustains the branch is the same thing that sustains the trunk. Are you with me? The trunk has its nutrients, and the connected branch benefits from the nutrients in the trunk. Listen to me carefully. I said earlier, more than once, God has what kind of standards for human beings? Divine. Now, here you are connected to Christ. What kind of life does Christ have? Divine life. Everlasting life. Eternal life. What is the only power that can conquer sin? The life of God. It's divine power. Let me say it again. Only divine power can conquer sin. Now you're connected to Christ. What power flows into your life? The very life? Come on, say it. The very life? Which is the life of? Ah, uh, you're not listening. Are you listening? Yes. Okay. I was wrong. You believe in forgiveness? Yes. Listen to me carefully. The life that flows into a believer is the life of God. Lived in a finite being. Through the presence of the Spirit of God. Who is also the Spirit of Christ. Now with the life of God in you. You dress differently. Now a lot of people never change because they're, they're beaten with, over the head with the, uh, the, uh, the church manual. Or uh, whatever. Listen to me. You present someone with Jesus and his life. As that person begins to experience that life. The words of Christ in John 3, 6 become uh, dramatized in the life. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And as the life of Christ begins to work in that person, the person begins to prefer only the things of the spirit. It's not hard to detect someone who's converted without judging. The Bible tells you how. By their fruits. You know, we love to tell, we shut people up by saying, don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm judging your behavior. If you just shot someone dead, don't tell me don't judge you. You just committed murder and I'm calling the police. I'm judging your, and I, I don't know why, you see, but I see what you did. The Bible says by the fruits. And so the life of Christ, which is the life of God, is the only power that can sustain us against sin. So when the Holy Ghost comes to you, he brings the life of Christ to you. The same life that resisted sin, the same life that went to the grave, the same life that brought itself back. All right, let me clarify what I mean by the same life that brought itself back. You read over and over in the Bible, the Father raised Jesus. Many times in the New Testament. That is true in this sense. Christ came at the command of the Father. Listen to me carefully. He came up at the command of the, the Father told him when to die, when to come up. Because Christ said, I only do what the Father tells me to do and say what he tells me to say. Are you following me? He came up. At the command of the Father. Now when you obey God, God assumes that behavior as his work in you. Ah, you missed that. You can't afford to miss this. Listen again. When we obey God, God claims that behavior as his work in us. Because it is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. No carnal person can obey God. 
But when you give your life to God and God controls your life with your permission, then your spiritual accomplishments become God's work in your life. And so when Jesus obeyed the Father and rose when the Father said, the Father says, I raised him. But Jesus said, no man taketh it from me. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus said in John 2, I think it's verse 19, Destroy this temple, and in three days, I. Now this is essential. This is a little digression. If someone else had to raise Christ, you would have a Savior who needs help. And if you have a Savior who needs help, you're in trouble. What does the Bible say in Hebrews verse 1, verse 3? Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins. No help. By himself purged our sins. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus Christ raised himself. But at the command of the Father, and so the Father claims the credit. Understand me clearly. Now, that life, that reverse death, that's the power that works in you. Now, if that life can reverse death, can it reverse smoking? Mm -hmm, which is bigger. If you have the life, the power that reverses death, can it cancel pornography addiction? Yes. Which means there is no excuse for what? Sin. Because there is no sin I can commit for which sufficient power is not available. That power is the very life of God. Through the Spirit and through the Spirit-filled Word. And that power comes to us not as something sent independent of God. That power comes to us in the person of Christ himself. You see, Christ is the power. Christ is our righteousness. Christ is our wisdom. Christ is our redemption. Christ is our salvation. It is all Christ. And we, through the Spirit, become one with him. I was talking to the youth earlier today. I have one minute left. Sister, that clock <laughs> needs prayer. <laughs> Got to be kidding. Now, if one, I have one minute, 22 seconds, you need to leave or go to another barbecue, go ahead. But I need 10 minutes. Is anyone supposed to speak after me? Okay, so I won't trespass someone else's territory chronologically. Okay. No sin. No sin should conquer forever someone possessed by the life of God. Amen. And Jesus proved it. Not simply by the life he lived, but by his conquest of death. And death is where the power of Satan is revealed. The Bible says in Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had what? The power of death. Now the power of death is overcome only by the power of life. And that is the life of God. Because he's the living God. And that power, that life is available to you. Listen to me, it is available to you through faith, which is not just I believe, I believe. It is submission to the will of God and to the work of the word of God. When the life of Christ is in us, we become one with Christ. And so the Bible says, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Whatever Christ accomplished in his humanity, we are to accomplish because we have the same humanity. And so the servant of the Lord writes, who's the servant of the Lord? Yes, he writes in the Tsar of Ages, page 664, paragraph 4. Jesus revealed no qualities and exercised no powers that men may not have through faith in him. His perfect humanity is that which all his followers may possess if they will be in subjection to God as he was.
we have a church full of weak people and spiritual cowards. And the word to us is, the power that attended Jesus is available to us. Did Jesus raise the dead, yes or no? Did Paul raise the dead? Yes, Eutychus. Did Jesus raise the dead? Did Peter raise the dead? Yes. Did Jesus heal the lame? Did Peter and John heal the lame? Yes. Did Jesus heal the demon possessed? Did the apostles do the same thing? Yes. Now, I did say, I did issue caution. No matter how close we are to Christ, we can never be God. Are you with me? But we can be as close to God as any non-God being can be. And so while Peter raised the dead, Peter can't raise himself. Who has to raise him? Jesus, because Peter's not God. Paul raised the dead, but someone else has to raise Paul. But no one raised Jesus. He raised himself. And he says to you and to me, through faith, connect with me. Connect. Genetically. You were bone of my bone. Spiritually. Flesh of my flesh through my humanity. One with Christ. Closer to Christ than Adam was before he sinned. Wherever you go, that closeness should attend you. That's why the Bible says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, because I am right with you, wherever you are. My brothers and sisters, do you have a relationship with God? I know you have one with the church. Oh, thanks. I know you have one with the church, but do you have one with Jesus? Listen to him in Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, finish the verse, I will do, give you rest. Now, come unto me. You come to Christ first before you come to a church. Many people come to the church first. And then they just become baptized demons. You've got to come to Christ first. And then Christ prepares you for the church. Come unto me, says Jesus. I'm a person. You're hungry, I've felt it. You're despised by your friends, I have felt it. You're abused, I have felt it. Your family didn't understand your decision to get baptized, I have felt it. Amen. Come to me. Women all over you, I have felt it. Men all over you, I understand. Come to me. All ye that labor. The word all is inclusive of every nation, tribe, kindred, and people. Are you white? Jesus says what? Come on, what does he say? Come to me. Are you black? Come to me. Are you a Native American? Come to me. Are you from Samoa? Come to me. You're rich? Come to me. You're broke? Come to me. You're man? Come. You're woman? Come. You're divorced? Come. You're sexually abused? Come. Landlord threw you out unjustly? Come. The church fired you from the book and Bible house or whatever you call it now, Adventist Book Center. Wrongly, the greatest pain is the pain the church inflicts. Jesus says what? Come. Conference president moved you to Siberia because you didn't vote for him? Come. <laughs> Come. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, what's the ironclad guarantee? I will give you rest. Why does Christ give it? Because you can't give it to yourself. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Ah, learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Now you can give yourself rest for your body. You cannot give yourself, nor can I, rest for the soul. Only God can give that. 
And that comes with a union with Christ. Now, a certain degree of it comes when you first come to Christ or you're learning about Christ. But when you're united with him, that rest in its fullness comes. And you can be at peace in the midst of a storm. My brothers and sisters, God desires a oneness with you that he has with no other created being in the universe, including those who have never sinned. I want you to think of that when you leave this place. I don't know what you do when you leave, what you talk about, but it's good to go thinking of what you've heard. That right where you sit, if your life is given to God, God is right with you. Not seated next to you. And so you go to your room with God. So when you turn on the TV or the iPad, who's watching with you? Mm -hmm. Not from next to you, right through your eyes. So what do you open the iPad to? Ellen White's writings, well, God bless you. <laughs> what sites do you visit because you and God are looking? I ask you a question, don't answer me. Do you have a relationship with Christ? If you don't, you may desire to be an agent, but you're not qualified. You will do damage to the work of Christ while intending to do good. Remember Peter? Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. When Peter, Christ said, I have to go to Jerusalem, suffer many things and die. Peter tried to stop him with good intentions. Christ turned and rebuked whom? Satan. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus realized at that point, notice my words, at that point, in that narrowly circumscribed time limit, a period, Peter was an instrument of Satan. You can leave this place tonight with your life in the hands of God. It's just a decision you make. When that man, that publican in Luke 18 said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus says in the very next verse, he went down to his house justified, meaning made right in state and standing. Made right. If you say from your heart, right where you are, Father, I give my life to you. Grant me your spirit in that sincere moment. The miracle takes place. Whether you feel it happened or not. Give your life to Christ. Be an agent, not a saboteur. Give it to Jesus. He understands you. He looks like you. He feels what you feel even now. The Bible says, we have not an high priest that cannot be touched. We have the feeling of our... He wasn't high priest on the earth. He's high priest now. The words say he can touch. He is touched by what we feel. His humanity still allows him. He did not escape connection with us because he's in heaven. His humanity still connects him to us. He feels what we feel. When the mother cries for the son who's in prison, Jesus' heart breaks. When a husband leaves the family, will not take care of them, marries another woman somewhere in the, 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 the Courtney Islands or something, Jesus feels it. Give your life to Christ. How? By just giving it to him. And if you don't know how to give it to him, you tell him, take it. What did I say? If you do not know how to give your life to Christ, tell him, here is my life, take it, and he will take it. And so tonight, I recommit my life to Christ. I do. It must be daily. Christ triumphant, page 22, paragraph 3. To follow Jesus requires wholehearted conversion at the start and a repetition of this conversion every day. And so I recommit my life to Christ for one purpose, preach the truth. At any cost, I'm not saying I'm a brave man, but at any cost, preach the truth. I've told God many times, if I can't preach the truth, I don't want to preach at all. I prefer to die than to tell people Sunday is the Sabbath. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. I prefer to die than to tell people once saved, always saved. Amen. I prefer to die than to tell people you cannot count to sin. Amen. And so I ask you tonight, as I have given my life to Christ again, as fully as I know how, will you not give your life to Christ? Make a conscious decision to say father i give my life to jesus through the spirit make me and him one you don't have to feel anything just believe the word 
Who will say, Father, I give my life to Christ. Unite me to him through his spirit. Can I see your right hand? I want you to mean it. Now, don't play with God. Play with me, but not God. Now, if you raise your hand, stand up. If you didn't, don't get up. It's okay. People make decisions at different times. You're standing to say, Father, I give my life to Christ. Through the spirit, unite me to him so that I am as close to him as he is to you. And you leave this place with that consciousness. And the remarkable thing is, when Christ is in you, he controls your life, not you. Did you hear what I said? He controls your life. And Christ will change you gradually, 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 until you and he are so much alike that it can be said of you, if ye have seen me, you've seen Christ. As it was said of Christ, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Head bowed, eyes closed. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this oneness with Christ which you require. There's no admission to your kingdom, dear God, without that oneness. Without that bond. Without that bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh connection. We thank you for the humanity of Christ. Ah, Lord, it is upon this remarkable event that even angels do not understand that we are connected to you. That bridge, he is human and he is God. And through him, we sit at your right hand. A remarkable privilege that we'll never fully understand. Father, we've stood to say, we recommit our lives to you. Grant us your spirit, because through the indwelling of the spirit, Christ comes to us. Dwells in us right now as we stand. And with that indwelling day, God, there comes an outflowing of the life of God in a finite being. Tremendous mystery, but highly encouraging. A divine life lived in a finite being. Our oh, Father, clarify our thinking tonight. Change our tastes. Give us an appetite for spiritual things, dear God. Let it not be said of us, as is said of the unbeliever in Titus 1.16, they profess that they know him, but in works they deny him. Father in heaven, let us be agents, transformed, maintaining our spiritual integrity in foreign territory because of our unbroken connection with Jesus, who as your agent on this territory called earth, maintained the integrity of his mission and his life as he depended on you. Dear God in heaven, please accept our decision. Please accept our decision. And while heads are bowed, and eyes are closed. Father, be with me as I issue this invitation. Here's bowed, eyes closed. Very direct, very plain. You need to be baptized. You're not baptized. If you will say, Father, I am willing to be baptized. No date set. Just express a willingness or to be rebaptized because of the life I have lived. I'm willing to be baptized or rebaptized. Resume my walk with God because by my life I have drifted from God. If that's your decision, I want you to leave your seat and come to say I am willing, whatever the date is, you and God can set that, to be baptized or rebaptized. Come. Come quickly. God bless you, sister. Come right up. Come, come. Don't be afraid. Come. God, my, my, God bless you. Come right here. Come right. I am willing to be baptized or rebaptized. Come. Come. 
If you're afraid, ask the person next to you to come with you. Come. God bless you. I'm willing to be baptized or rebaptized. We'll identify who your pastor is. Get in touch with him. I am willing to be baptized, rebaptized. I've understood something tonight I never understood. Now I want that experience of oneness with Christ. I am announcing my willingness. That's all. To be baptized. Come. Cards. My good people with cards, come. Someone else come. I am willing. I am willing. I have been baptized, but I have drifted from God. As many of you answered the call last night, the drift has been very serious. In other words, so serious, I have broken the contract between God and me. The marriage vow. I need to return to him the same way I came the first time. Baptism. You need to be rebaptized. Come. Evangelism, page 375, paragraph 2, Ellen White writes, When a soul is truly reconverted, let that soul be rebaptized. It's a serious decision, but it's required. Come. Father, I'm willing to be baptized. Come. Don't be afraid. Come. I'm willing to be rebaptized. Come. I was preaching in South Korea, and I met a retired minister from South Africa. I had made a call for baptism, rebaptism. Several people came, and he wanted to reassure them baptism is a very real, rebaptism is a very real experience. He said in the middle of his ministry, he went to the conference president and requested rebaptism. The conference president, of course, he, back, he said, no, 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 we can't baptize you. What would the members say? He said, he said, Mr. President, this is a matter of conscience. I have not grown for years. My relationship with God has been one flat line. I need to start all over again. The president said, okay, we'll baptize you at night. He said, no. Right in front of my church that they may see sometimes we need to start all over with God. And he was rebaptized in front of his church. He committed no great sin, but he just had no growth. Someone else. I'm willing to be baptized, rebaptized. Come. Just put one foot ahead of the other. Come. Unseen angels will walk with you. I give you 60 seconds. <laughs>
as if they were just waiting. I mean, they just came, and I repented deeply. And I said, Lord, whenever your spirit talks to me, I will never hesitate again. Heads bowed, you may come while I pray. You will not disturb the prayer. The call is baptism, rebaptism. After the prayer, I'll go to the right. Bring your cards to me, please. I can pray tonight. Then I'll turn them over to the proper authorities tomorrow. Father in heaven, we thank you for your transforming word. We thank you today, God, that the Spirit of Christ is available to us. When he indwells us, he represents you, he represents the Father and the Son. Now, dear God, we've understood a little clearly what it means to be one with Christ. We have grasped to some degree the high privilege you have made available to us of being one with you. Dear Father in heaven, forgive us for having such a low view of ourselves. Help us to understand the standards you have for us. Human beings are divine standards. We thank you for Christ. We thank you for his life. We thank you that life is available to us. And now, dear God, remember those who've come forward to say, I'm willing to be baptized or rebaptized. Father, no date has been set. We just want the heart to say, I am willing. Now bless them, dear God. Let no power on earth change their minds, but let the public example inspire some other young man, some other young woman to come. And so I pause 30 more seconds. Somebody else come and say, I am willing. I need to be. I'm willing. Come. 30 seconds. Willing to be baptized or rebaptized. Come. 30 seconds. Somebody else. And then I will close it. 20 seconds. Just come fast. 15. Ten. Someone else. Come. Five. Come, 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 come. God bless you. Come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Give my lovely sister a card. Come. God bless the one who came with her. Give her a card. God bless you, sister. Father in heaven, I close the prayer. I can only do so much. I'm human. It's really your spirit at work. Now, Father, work on the hearts of those still resisting, still uncertain, still afraid, but you love them dearly, and the proof is Calvary. Move upon their hearts through the Spirit. Give them no rest for their own sake until they make that decision to be one with you. Again, I ask you to sustain those who came forward. Let no power on earth change their minds, but when tomorrow rises, the sun rises, and you've given them life, let the devil see clearly that they have not changed their minds. We thank you for that oneness. We thank you for that union. Save us when you come in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let God's people say amen and amen. God bless you. Please fill out the cards and I'll be right to the right to pick them up. God bless you.